your digestive system. Basically, the ability for you to get food in to power cell respiration is not as complex as some systems, but it has a lot of intricacies that we need to consider as far as the ability of your body to actually break down the food that you eat. In its simplest form, it is just simply a muscular tube from your mouth to your anus. That's it. Now, we also look at the associated organs with that. So essentially, organs that are supporting that basic linear function of moving food from one end, getting out as much nutrient as possible, and putting the waste out the other end. Now, in depending on our diet, this process changes slightly because depending on the types of food that we have available, whether or not they are calorie dense, things like that, we do look at changes in our ability to digest those foods. We have seen this before. When we think about the types of foods that our cells are, are breaking down, the macromolecules that our cells are breaking down, we get more or less energy depending on the actual macromolecule itself. So if our calories every day that we take in exceed the calories that we actually need to go about our day, of course, then we're looking at gaining weight. If our calories are less than we need in a given day, we look at losing weight. Of course, that's very generalized and doesn't take into account any genetics or anything like that. But at this point, because in developed countries we have such high dense, high calorie dense foods, we do look at a, a higher percentage of overweight and obese people because of high calorie diets, inactive lifestyles. And we sit all day, right? You're sitting in class, I sit all day long a lot of the time. So the process for converting this into energy, converting that food into energy has become a real health crisis in the United States and other developed countries. They're estimating now that obesity factors into about 300,000 premature deaths per year in the US. And that when we look at obesity surpassing smoking in its contribution to diseases, diseases like diabetes, cardiac conditions, and so on, this is a huge concern. Now, when we think about actual weight loss and controlling your weight, this is actually extremely complex. Leptin is a hormone that is actually produced by fat cells that as they are stretched, as they store larger amounts of fat, they actually secrete this hormone leptin that suppresses your appetite. And what they have found is that if you actually inherit a mutant form of the leptin gene, and so you are not producing leptin properly. If we give you leptin, you will lose weight. But the miracle diet pill, it is not. If you're an overweight and ad adult who produces normal levels of leptin, giving you more leptin isn't going to fix anything. They tried this in mice. So looking at how the mouse with the defect gene for leptin, so this is the defect gene and this is the normal gene. And you see huge differences. The mouse on the left will literally eat himself to death because he doesn't know he's full. Chubby mouse. BMI has been the gold standard for a long time for humans to estimate whether or not they're overweight, underweight, whatever. Now, we know very well that this chart while it gives us some sort of guideline, is not the end all to be all of health choices. So if you are falling on a line here, so say you are 180 pounds and you are roughly 5'6", we look at you being between overweight and obese, but is that really depending on your physical structure, depending on your muscle mass, all of these things, is that really where you should fall? Who knows? 